Nona.com podcast. We're coming to you from the USTA National Campus in Lake Nona, Orlando. I'm one of your hosts, Nina Pantic, joined by Irina Falcone. Hey guys, how's it going? Our special guest for this episode is Emilio Nava. Hi, Emilio. Hey, everybody. Emilio is a number five ranked junior in the world. He was a finalist at the Junior Australian Open and the Junior US Open, and he's joining us today to talk about his tennis story. Yeah, no, I mean, happy to be here. It's going to be fun. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, how did you get into tennis? Uh, well, my mom actually started us playing. I also have two older brothers. But uh, no, we have a little public park, and she'd just take us out and just hit a couple balls and just run around. And that was in L.A.? Yeah, yeah, Woodland Hills, L.A. Okay, and how old were you when you moved from Mexico? Because that's where you originally uh, were born, or no? No, I was born and raised in L.A. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, my okay, whole cool. life over there, so... Uh, that's awesome. Do you ever visit Mexico at all or no? Uh, not really, but I mean, when I have to play a tournament, I go down there and, and I see some family, so it's nice. Nice. Yeah. When did you start taking tennis seriously? Uh, I'd say around like age 10 or 11 when I knew I had a, I had a bit of talent and I could, I could work with it. So I started really focusing on and off the court and I mean, it's going pretty well. So you were able to tell that you had talent? That's pretty impressive that as a eight-year-old. Yeah, I mean, not really talent, but I knew I was like pretty quick on the court and pretty fast. And yeah. I could I could make balls like completely sliding. So I was like, hey, I mean, I could just do this all day and not miss, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're here at the USTA. So when did you make the move? Or are you based here in Orlando? Uh, Well, now I'm going to be based here in Orlando. But uh, last year and the year before, I was either L.A. or I was also training in Spain in an academy down there. So, uh no, but now it's it's all Orlando. So are you a pro or are you still an amateur? No, I signed a pro last year and uh, this is twenty twenty is gonna be my first uh, my first first pro year. Was that a difficult decision at all or were you pretty adamant about going the pro route? Uh, I mean my whole life I was training just to I mean, I'm gonna go pro. Like I never never really had school in my in my head. So I mean every day was just let's let's train to be a pro and I mean when I signed I was pretty confident about it. Nice. Yeah. So you're saying 2020 is the first year of you being a pro, so no more juniors. Yeah, no more juniors. I age out in about like 12 days, actually. I turn 18. Okay. So then I won't be able to play next year. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. So speaking of aging out, uh, USCA actually has a rule that when you turn 18, you can no longer stay at the lodge, which are the dorm rooms that they have here situated for you. So what will you do after that? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I've been here for like two weeks, and when I move out, it's going to be like, uh, I think they're moving me down to the hotel, so it's not, it's not going to be that bad, but I mean, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find a place down here and stay. <laughs> yeah. wow. Are your parents here as well? No. Uh, no, they're not, but uh, I think my mom's going to come down and just, just look, look at everything. Is it like surprising at all? I mean, talking to you right now, I mean, you're 17 years old, and you're moving to Orlando by yourself pretty much and just getting a place by yourself. I mean, is that daunting to you at all? I mean, uh, not a lot of 17 year olds are doing yeah, that. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I kind of look forward to it. Cause I mean, I really, I've been in my house since like I was a little baby, like 17 years old. So I mean, about time to move out, right? <laughs> Debatable. Oh yeah. Debatable. I have a lot, I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with you. <laughs> what are you most excited about for the new year? Uh. I mean, just grinding in the pro level, because I mean, when I was playing juniors last year, it was all grand slams and nice tournaments. Now it's going to be that, that like grind of day in, day out every week. So I mean, I'm looking forward to that. Do you have a pro ranking at the moment? Uh, yeah, I do. I think I'm about like 900 or 850 yeah. around there. Top thousand, baby. Exactly. That's let's something. do it. Let's go. Love it. How did it feel to get that first point when you got it? I think it was in 2018? Uh, yeah, I think I played, a, I played a future and I won my first point there. And then I played a... And then I played a challenger in Mexico, and I won five points, and I won my first round, and I was I was I was pretty happy. That was a big moment. Yeah. <laughs> Are you fully, I guess, ready? Do you think to be chasing these points in the ITFs and challengers? Because in juniors, you're top five. You're kind of already established. You kind of got to start all over again. What's uh, is it daunting at all? Uh, yeah, a bit. Cause I mean, you have a you have a little bit of expectations as well. Like, oh, he's supposed to win this match and stuff. But I mean, also. I mean, I try to focus on every point, every match, and I mean, if I win, great. If not, I mean, let's get better. You talk about expectations. You're going into the pro world being a junior. I mean, what expectations do you think you have? Because, I mean, you're probably going to be the lowest ranked player to anyone that you play against, Yeah, right? yeah definitely. But, I mean, getting, getting to these two finals this year, I mean, three if you include doubles, but... Uh, 
I mean, I don't know if it's expectations against other people, but maybe against myself, saying, hey, like, like you've, like, you're a pretty good junior, like, now you got to win in the pros. But, I mean, I try not to think about it, but, yeah. I'm sure Dr. Larry Lauer will yeah, help right? you out with that. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Expectations, what a word. I mean, yeah. that's one of those things where you know you're good, but you also have to know that your opponent yeah, is good, exactly. right? And he can also play and hit winners on you, and you just got to you gotta accept it and keep fighting. Yeah. So Junior Australian Open is where you kind of came almost out of nowhere to reach the final. Was that a surprise to you? Uh, to be honest, yeah, it was because, I mean, well, also I was training pretty hard the three weeks before. I was just, I was pretty focused. But, I mean, to get to the finals, it's, I mean, of course you want to win two or three rounds, but then after that it gets like, all right, I mean, let's just fight and try to get to the finals. And, I mean, it happened. And I was one point short, but that's tennis. Hey, you got right. to the finals. Yeah. You got to the Sunday. <laughs> exactly. Championship day. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest difference between the juniors and the pros from your experience so far? Uh, I think it's going to be more experience. And, I mean, now you're playing against men instead of juniors and not not as strong kids. So, I mean, uh, a lot more experience and they know what they're doing out there and, like, they know how to get into your head a little bit as well. Is the strength and the power, is that, like, pretty... Like, can you see it? Is it pretty obvious for you? Yeah, definitely, especially on the serves. I mean, forehands, it's it's just a bigger ball. It comes a little heavier. And, I mean, you just got to get used to it. But, yeah, I'm getting there. And your family has tennis players in it, right? So your brother, he plays at Wake Forest? Yeah, he does, yeah. And uh, Diego plays in LMU in L.A. Okay, so yeah. you got you got a, an active tennis family. Yeah, yeah, they both play. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty competitive. Are you cousins with... Ernesto Escobedo? Yeah, yeah, okay. I am. yeah, first cousins, yeah. That's small That's world. Helpful. I know, right? yeah. <laughs> any, I mean, is there any help from having a player, or your your siblings and your cousin are professional college players? Has that been a huge help? Uh, definitely, because, uh, I mean, they always they always try to help me in anything. Like, if I need some help, like, hey, what do I do on my serve? I text them and they help me out. <laughs> I mean, although I have better serves than them, like, I try to I try to include them a little bit, yeah. But, How yeah. competitive are you guys? Uh we're pretty competitive, especially me. I mean, they don't really like, if they lose to me, they don't really care, but I'm like, yeah. yeah, try, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to win. I expect to exactly, win, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's the pro. It makes sense. Yeah. Right. And do uh, your parents ever were involved in your tennis? Oh, uh, yeah, they were definitely. My my dad ran track and field, and my mom played tennis, so she was top 200. So uh, my dad was my fitness coach, and my mom was my tennis coach. So I get off the tennis court with my mom. And I go to the gym with my dad, so it's the whole day just with them together. That's pretty lucky, man. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm really grateful. Is that still working like that? No, because now you're here. Yeah, now I'm here, and uh, they're definitely still going to come down and help. So, I mean, I'm happy for that. And uh, But, yeah, it's, it's going to change a bit. Is it weird having, obviously, you've been used to having your mom as your coach your entire life. Do you feel that now you have to go and have a male coach now, or do you think she'll always kind of be there? Uh, I mean, she'll always kind of be there because I feel like she definitely knows my game the best out of anybody. And uh, if I have a, if I have a, another coach, I mean, I'll probably still have her there just just to keep another eye out. And if she sees something, I'll definitely listen. But I mean, it's good to have two eyes and two opinions. That's some one people, way to look at it. Yeah. Some people might yeah. disagree with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's still 17, 18. He's got yeah, time yeah. to rebel. Who, to who are you working with here? Uh, either Sylvan or Dean. Yeah, so it's that. a solid team. Yeah. That's awesome. Have you had any interactions with pros when you were at these Grand Slams? Uh, memorable moments, maybe? Did you stalk Roger Federer? Uh, that's just you, like Nina. That. That's just you. That's, that's just, just you and you. Me. Yeah, that's just us. <laughs> yeah, no, I did uh, after the Aussie final actually. Uh, Djokovic had like a court booked right after the on Rod Laver, so I was like, he kind of like pushed us off the ser- trophy presentation. <laughs> no, no, but it was nice. He he talked to us. He gave us a couple words, and we took a picture with him, which was really nice. And that was that was huge. He tagged me on his Instagram post, and I got a lot of followers. Oh, so that Lord, that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's what it's all but about. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's he, really cool. It was great. He was great. I really admired him. Because wow. the finals, the, the Slam Junior Finals, are they played in the same stadiums as the pros or different ones? Uh, it depends on Grand Slam, but in Aussie, they played me on Rod Laver. And at US Open, they played me on uh, Arthur uh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, okay, yeah, so the big courts. Yeah, exactly. How did you, I obviously know that the result was not what you wanted. How did you feel out there on those big courts? Uh, I mean, here in, when I was playing US Open, I felt kind of comfortable because, I mean, I have, I have the crowd on my side and they're always going to be there and help. So, I mean, 
there's definitely a bit of nerves when they call your name and you're walking out. But I mean, when you get in the warm up, you start getting used to it and it's really nice. Uh. I think those experiences are going to be a huge help for you when you end up uh, chasing points in the real ATP tour all year. But one of the things I never realized when I was playing is the j junior players get to kind of experience the Grand Slams fully. You know, you're in the same hallways, you're in the same practice courts, you're walking past them. Do you have a lot of interaction? Do you feel like you're you're in the slam? Yeah, definitely. I feel like, uh, I mean, I'm next quote on with Djokovic, you know? But I mean, not really. <laughs> but I mean, I'm there, he, they call my name, and then they call his name, and it's like, you're kind of you're kind of in it with them. And if you stay long enough, like, you're playing the same day they're playing the final, so you feel like you're really in there. I will say there's a few disparities, I'm sure, that you can agree with me here, because in the junior U.S. Open, I mean, you have a different locker room. You probably eat in a different spot, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, no, I think I think it's the same. You eat the same. Right, yeah. but like it's near the end and when there's mm. very few pro players happen. Yeah. And I think at Wimbledon also there's a – you, you yeah. be in Orangi, yeah, is that yeah, right? Orangi, yeah. So there are some places, for example, in Australia where you guys are all together, mm. that's all there. But, um, yeah, the other two – can be strict. I mean, Wimbledon is usually strict no matter what. Yeah, yeah, they are pretty strict. And uh, yeah, US Open, you have different locker rooms. And I mean, the cafeterias, I think the same for both. But I mean, yeah, if it gets pretty late, you don't really see anybody. But I mean, it's still it's still nice to play on the courts and be there. Yeah, you get a taste of it. You get a taste of what a grand slam is going to look like yeah. when you're when you're the big dog. Exactly. I think that's I think that's invaluable because a lot of junior tournaments are played all over the world in different courts and clubs, not at the same exact venue where Roger Federer is playing Novak Djokovic. You know, that, that was more my point. So my question is, when was your last tournament? My last tournament was uh, the 25K I played here, actually. Okay. In Orlando, yeah. So after that tournament, were, were you able to take a break at all, or were you... Uh, yeah, I took two days off, and then I started preseason. So it's uh, the young bounce back quick, Irina. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I am just. Oh, that is just so. I'm cringing right now yeah. because the idea of well, being able to start that quickly is crazy to me. I mean, He's eager. The the, uh, the thing is, I was also hurt. I had a foot injury, so I mean, I was out for like two months. So I wasn't really playing tennis. I was doing fitness, but it's not really the same. So I had a bit of time to relax. But so, what day did you officially start preseason? Uh, I started this Monday actually. Okay, so yeah. this Monday, and you will be here until December twenty first. Wow! So you're you're currently on the two a day gym session yeah, right now. Yeah, two a day gym, and then next week I think it's gonna be two gym, one tennis, and then two 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 two. Wow! Yeah. Are there any players at the USJ this off season you're gonna get to work with? Uh, I mean, there's Bjorn Fortangelo, Chris Eubanks, Mackenzie McDonald. I mean. To, to be working out like with those guys side by side, it's I mean it's pretty big. It's a lot of definitely some motivation there, and uh, I mean the coaches are great, the staff's great, and I really appreciate it. From a day to day kind of basis, you see these guys. I mean they've been in the top 150 level at least. What would you take away? What would you see, say is the biggest difference from what you do day to day to what they do? Uh, I mean they they do the little things. They do the little things perfect. And I think like that's I, I'm trying to work on that a little more and trying to trying to do what the coach tells me, but then also try to do a, a little extra. A, exactly, a little extra, little stuff that hey, if it helps, I mean, yeah, why not? But in January, you're not going to be going back down to Australia, are you? Or, or is that no, part of the plan? No, I'm not. I don't. My ranking 850 doesn't really get me into the qualities there yet. So yeah. So do you know where you're starting? Is it going to be in the U.S.? Yeah, I'm actually going to go back to L.A. because there's a there's a tournament there and then Arizona and then. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to have a jam-packed schedule because you're turning 18, which means you're not um, kind of limited to tournaments anymore, correct? Yeah, no. Or, uh, no, even even when I was 17, I don't think there was a limit. Are guys oh, okay. limited at all? Mm, I mean, so if you're like 14 or 15. If you're 14 years old, I, I think you can only play like eight juniors that year or something. Oh, okay. Like, there are, yeah, okay. Yeah, so there are like some that. limits. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, four, well, I mean 14. Um, what do you like to do off the court? Uh, go to the gym. No, nah, no, nah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Get Instagram followers. Yeah, <laughs> no. Nah. Um, I mean, right now I just like to relax, watch a show maybe. And uh, what are you watching right now? Uh, I just I'm starting Watchmen. It's pretty good, but I finished it already. So <laughs> you started Watchmen. Well, I mean, I finished it, but like, there's a new episode coming every day, and like, I'm right on time. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. But uh, it's either that or I mean. I gotta do my homework. I gotta finish high school, so that's also there. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So when are you graduating? Uh, I'm gonna try next year or next semester. 
But yeah. that's on schedule. Yeah, it's on schedule. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Is but it I, a homeschooling? She's, she's trying to say, like, hey, like, okay, like, I don't think you're going to be on time, you know? So. She's judging. No, no she's I'm judging not you. saying exactly. that. No, I just, <laughs> yeah. I got confused. I, for some reason, I forgot that you graduate when you're 18. Okay, yeah. so how, is school easy for you? Because some players, I mean, are like, uh, I'd rather not. I know one player yeah. took her way too long to get a high school degree yeah. not mentioning any names but it took a minute no yeah i mean it's definitely i mean after let's say you're doing like two fitness two tennis i mean all you want to do is go to the room eat and like go to sleep you don't have the motivation to do school but i mean if you try to do an assignment a day and you're just you're passing the classes i feel like that's fine okay so yeah. it's online yeah it's online everything's on the computer do you have any plans for pursuing a college degree online at some stage of your life or not yet uh not yet no, I'm not really looking for. I'm not really looking forward to doing that. If you would have gone to college, where do you think you would have gone? Uh, I probably would have gone with my brother Eduardo to Wake, because okay. I mean they're also like top three in the nation, top two. So. Right. Uh, have you ever visited him? Uh, no, I haven't. He tells me to come down, but I'm like, no, nah, man, I gotta train. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Dedicated, man. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Gosh. <right>? Wow, <laughs> it's a good effort. All right. Well, I mean, I guess my other other thoughts would be, what about video games don't yeah. all teenage boys play video games yeah no i do i have a i got a playstation at home okay, and good. Uh, there's also a playstation here but uh r r rules kind of changed because like they don't really let us play like shooting games anymore and i mean i get it but like i want to play zombies here okay. at usca yeah they changed the rules like four months ago so like oh now when i'm like really bored like i can't really can't really do anything <laughs> that is so strict yeah are you allowed so I don't really know what the lodge dorm room looks like inside. So you just have like a bed. Do you have a TV in there? Do you have no, what do you have in there? It's uh, you walk in, and it depends what dorm you have. I have like the big one because I'm like a little older. And uh, you walk in, and it's two doors, and those two doors have one bed, one bed each, and then one bathroom. So two people share a bathroom. And uh, since it's, since it's preseason, there's not that many kids. I told them if I can have like a room to myself, and uh, it's pretty nice. I uh, keep it clean and. Uh, I mean, it's comfortable, no TV, but I mean, it's fine. There's a TV outside. So. Okay. Yeah. Wait, do they feed you? Are you going to have to feed yourself now that when you turn 18? Because your birthday is December, so is yeah. this the end of your free food? I think so. I'm going to gonna have to start buying my own food at Publix. Oh my God. Well, I guess it's like a college age. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah, I guess. But I mean, even in college, though, you have the option to go to the cafeteria and yeah. go there. Here, you're not going to have that option anymore. Are there any other sports you watch and follow? Uh, I mean... Football, college football, definitely, and NFL, NBA. I who's, mean, you, who's your team? Uh, college football, Alabama, because my dad went there, so I, I support. Yeah, it's tough to, to root for them. They never win. I know, right? Like, <laughs> I think they lost last weekend or something. Oh, no. I mean, yeah, it's tough. And who have you looked up to in tennis? Do you have a favorite player? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, David Ferrer, he ended up retiring this year, so that was kind of tough to see. But, uh, no, nah, he's always been my... I always look up to him. He's an idol. Do you look up to him because that's what you kind of emulate your game to? Or? Uh, I mean, I try to, but a lot of people tell me, like, I hit the ball too big and I, like, hit shots to the fence, and I'm not really a grinder. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. I, I try to be a little grinder. But yeah. Hitting the ball too big, I mean, I don't see that being, like, a negative thing. Yeah. I, mean, I wish I, I mean, could hit the ball too big. <laughs> yeah, it's good when you make it, but then when you hit the fence, like, off the <laughs> balance, it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> that's not the good part, right? <laughs> exactly. Kind of bring your margin in, bud. I know, Come right? On. Coach Irina over here. Oh, that's yeah. that's an interesting choice for an idol. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. Yeah, I mean he's he's like five eight. He's pretty small, so I mean just he's a workhorse though. Yeah, exactly. He works so hard. Yeah, he's a beast. Oh, and I mean to be like top four in the world with like Djokovic, Nadal, and Federer, it's I mean it's not bad. It's a good yeah. effort. Exactly. If they weren't playing, he would have won a slam. Yeah, the underdog. Yeah, Maybe I mean, he, a few. He got finals of French against Nadal, but I mean. It's an adult. Yeah, I mean, you're playing adult. Good luck. Just, <laughs> just give me the check right now. Exactly. Give me the second place trophy. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna um, make you jealous. I was there for his uh, last match in Madrid. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, cool. I mean, I'm gonna make you jealous. I played a set against him before he retired. Ooh. <laughs> How'd that go? I was down five four, and he was serving. But I mean, then they kicked us off, so like nobody won, nobody lost. So. Oh. Did you take a picture with him? Yeah, I did. It was pretty cool, actually. Were you fangirling or fanboying pretty hard? Uh, a bit, but also like. Gotta keep was, my cool. I was I was moving around on the court a bit, so yeah. Nice. That's <laughs> an he, incredible experience. Did yeah, he tell awesome. you anything about your game? Like any any feedback or anything? Uh I mean he just told me just keep fighting and just I mean, 
it, the, the grind is tough like trying to get up there so i mean just that's such a debbie yeah, thing to exactly. say <laughs> keep fighting just keep fighting keep working and i was like yeah yeah definitely that's awesome it's a shame that you never got to play him for real in the pro tour but i, I mean yeah i would i would have loved to but also i don't want to don't want to get my my butt kicked that hard <laughs> so, yeah what's been your uh, most memorable like obviously you've had finals of slams junior slams that's pretty memorable but what would you say has been the most memorable whether it's tennis on on court off court what's been your most memorable moment uh i mean i think it's just it's just playing with the fam like all three of us on the court just grinding that's pretty nice i really like that i really appreciate that and uh and also like like if we play tiebreakers and we get butts up and i hit him that feels pretty good <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah I think that's oh, it, definitely. Man. Yeah, but that's no, it's awesome. just being with the fam on the court is definitely nice. That's yeah. awesome. All right, well, I mean, Emilio, look, good luck in 2020. We're very yeah. excited to watch. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm be excited. cheering you on, man. Oh yeah. You're definitely yeah. a player to watch for, and it's really fun that you uh, joined us and talked to us. Yeah, I know. It's been a lot of fun. I always wanted to do one of these. I like the microphones and stuff. Yeah. I gotta ask though. You said that you did yoga today. Yeah. How's your flexibility? It's it's pretty good. I mean, I can do the splits. I can. Uh, you can do the splits. Yeah, I can do the splits. Kids these days. Yeah. What? I mean, it, it took me like a year and a half, two years to like truly get it. But you have to do it like every single day for like ten minutes, and it's it's a grind. Holy. Are you know you can do it? No, I I, I can honestly <laughs> say I can't do the splits. I I do yoga fairly well, but I mean the splits. Wow. I'm yeah. Bowing down to you right now. That's yeah, a good yeah, effort, yeah. man. Thank you. Thank Keep it up. Keep I up will. those hip mobility definitely. exercises. Yeah. yeah, yeah we can definitely hear the dedication you have to tennis and yeah, getting yeah. better. I mean, doing the splits is uh, uh, uh that and then some. That's yeah. good effort. All right. Well, that's been it for this episode of the Tennis.com podcast. I've been Nina Pantic, joined by Irina Falcone. Thanks for listening, you guys. And thanks you so much, Emilio, no. for coming here and hanging with us. No, thank you, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. From the Tennis Channel Podcast Network, this has been the Tennis.com podcast. Be sure to subscribe to stay caught up. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and every major listening app, as well as Tennis.com slash podcasts. You can also see the videos of our episodes on Tennis Channel's YouTube page and Tennis.com's Facebook page. We're your hosts, Nina Pantic and Irina Falcone. We'd like to thank our team, editor and audio designer and video editor, Christina Koseva, producers Alexa March and Sean O'Malley, and executive producers Shelby Coleman, Kyle Einhorn, and Andy Chu.